Hello, hockey fans. The Minnesota Hockey Connection is on the air. We're on the air for the next half hour. I'm Kenny Callagher, along with Jerry Burrow. We have a guest today. We're going to talk about Mike Randolph and what happened out at Duluth East. Mike Randolph uh, resigned from coaching hockey at Duluth East. He hasn't uh, resigned from coaching hockey, I don't think. But uh, we're going to talk about the next half hour about Mike Randolph, Duluth East, and uh, Jerry has a guest that we're going to introduce. So, yeah, Jerry. Yeah, our guest is Eric Skoog. Uh, He's originally from Forest Lake, and he moved up here in 2011? 2011, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. And he brought three of his kids. Oh, he has four kids, mm -hmm. Cole, Paige, Marcus, and a daughter, Whitney. And who's your daughter married to? Uh, Kazimer Kaskasuo, former UMD Bulldog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Played pro hockey for Toronto, the minor league club, and he came up for a few games for the you know, Maple Leaves, and now he's over in Sweden? Uh, yeah, he, well, he just finished with uh, Nashville. Got to sit on the bench a few times with Nashville. Oh, he got uh, traded to Nashville. Okay. Uh, yep, yeah, well, he signed with Nashville, and then uh, now he just signed with uh, with one of the teams in Sweden. Yeah, really? so close, close to home. son-in-law. Son-in-law, yes. Yeah. Nice. What kind of kid is he? As a father-in-law? Yeah. Honest to goodness, yeah. I, I couldn't have asked for a better a better guy to marry my daughter. Hmm. Straight up. He's... He reminds me of my own boys, uh, my own family. No, he's from Esco, played at Cool K. Uh, no, actually, he's from Vanta, Finland. Yeah, so from he's, Finland. So he's okay. from Finland. And then he, he came here and he played for the Wilderness. Uh, oh, okay. First That's season. how he got recruited. And then he signed, uh, he got a scholarship at UMD and played there for two seasons and then signed with Toronto. Mm -hmm. Won a championship with UMD. I uh, did not win a championship. Okay, no. one bet and zero so yeah, far. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> My goals against is terrible. But he's a Finlander. Yeah. He, he, yes, he is right <laughs> off the boat from Finland. Yes, yes, Jerry, he All is. Right. Good Sounds guy, good. great guy. Yeah, but I do good. know that UMD, back-to-back -back great goaltenders. Yeah, ever since, has, yeah. Really? From him on. Yeah. Well, I think it goes back a little bit before yeah, that, too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, you can Kenny get Kenny Ryder? Through. Yes, absolutely. And who's the old... Uh, Minnesota Wild goalie. Oh, yeah, Stalock, yeah. Alex Stalock, yes. Yeah, so we had some good goalies in, for a few years there. So, Whitney and um, Kashmir has a daughter? Uh, yes, they've got a two-and-a-half-year-old daughter, which actually, um, actually, Whitney and Kaz right now are uh, taking a vacation. Uh, they just left yesterday, so my, my wife and I are playing Grandma and Grandpa for the nice. week. So. All right. Yeah, the call I had to take right before my, my wife had a question, but uh, I literally just left my granddaughter, and it's it's fun being a grandpa. <laughs> All right, yes. that's fun. You can spoil them and then send them back, right? <laughs> well, right, Eric, absolutely. Eric, you've obviously been affected by this situation at Duluth East with the coach Mike Randolph. Uh, where do you want to start with this? How are, How is your family, how are you been affected? You know, I'll tell you, when, when I talk about uh, Mike Randolph, I, I do get emotional. Um, I think Mike Randolph is one of the, the the best things that ever happened to my kids in sports absolutely um and i say that uh, my, my son Paige, um we moved up here his senior year and we came from forest lake um he was going to be a, a captain his his senior year he'd already been named captain uh and then some work things changed and and we um you know i ended up coming up 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 to the northland here and when we when we decided where we were going to move we we chose Duluth East, and we could have moved uh, over on the east, uh, or, or excuse me, more further up the range. We could have moved, stayed in Duluth here, wherever. But you know, just my interactions with Coach Randolph through the advanced program, and, and seeing him with his son Jake, and talking to him just as a dad, um, just got a lot of respect for for Coach Randolph. And um, you know, watching him on TV with the state tournament. Uh, so when we came up here, um, it was. Um, we, we did our due diligence, but, but we knew that, you know, in short order that, uh, that our, 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 well, at least one of my sons was going to, to try out for Duluth East. And, um, you know, with, with Coach Randolph, once we, we hit, uh, we got enrolled, we hit his summer uh, program, Mike didn't pull any punches. I mean, he was a guy who uh, said, look, we, we've got another goaltender, and, and you know, that, that you, that's there. Uh, we're going to work back and forth, and and somebody will, will rise, the cream will rise, so to speak. And, uh, but you know what he did is he gave my son a shot. And I think today what, what a lot of parents look at is they think that their kids should automatically, number one, get a shot, but I think that they believe that their child should be the guy or the gal. And you know, I think that that's part of what our problems are in society. Now, we have enough yeah. time to talk about societal problems, but 
the long and short of it, it, it really comes down to Mike gave him a shot and, and, you know, through some injuries and a concussion, uh, it didn't work out in a, in a previous year's uh, injury as well. It didn't work out the way that we hoped, but I just met with my son. Actually, we had, I, he's got a son now too. So we had two of our grandchildren. That's right. And, uh, yeah. uh, so he was up here for a wedding actually. So we got to watch our little grandson and, and I talked to Paige a little yesterday and, um, just asked him what he, what his recollections were and what, what he remembered of coach Randolph. And, and he said, you know, coach Randolph was, was firm. He was stern. Um, if he gave you a look, you knew that you, you messed up and you needed to elevate your game. But what, what my son Paige and my son Marcus both echo is that they have nothing but pure respect for coach Randolph. He was honest. He didn't play pull any punches when the game was on the line. They knew what their role was. And if that was to be a teammate on the bench, then that's what their job was. I remember Marcus when he first started in JV. He was a small little kid. <laughs> and I tell you what, that kid must have had to work his butt off to get where he got at that, in that program. I mean, you can tell. I mean, he worked out. He did everything he was supposed to. And, and then Randolph gave him a shot, you know. And he, he should be very proud of himself for what he did and what he did for the team and everything, you know. He was a team player, and he did the, all the things that Randolph wanted a player to do. There's only certain players that really can score on the team. There's not very many anymore in this day and age mm -hmm. in hockey. So you got to be a team player, a role player, and listen to your coach, and Marcus did that. No, he absolutely did, Jerry. I, You know, so Marcus was a defenseman, and you're right, he was a little guy, which was – Odd because my dad was six three. I'm six foot. Uh, my oldest son is six three. I mean, so I've got some big, big, big genes in my in my family. And Marcus is just this little, just this little guy, and and he was a defenseman. And I believe he got to suit up for varsity one time. So he got to sit on the bench for varsity one time, and he was so proud. And we were so proud of him because he did. He worked really hard in practice, and and he got that opportunity. And then his junior year, I think he got to skate once or twice. His junior year with varsity, but. Marcus was a defenseman and, um, you know, Marcus just, he, you're right. He lifted, he, he, we'd go out to, um, uh, the ski jump over there, Chester bowl, and he would run up the hill. I mean, I, I would say it's up to you. If you want to make the team, I'll be here. I'll take you. I'll do what, I, what we need to do. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. And, and he did, he shot his hockey pucks. He lifted, he ran and he started to grow a little bit. And when the season came in, when, when the, when the tryouts were happening and they were doing those scrimmages, Randolph, Marcus came home and he said, Coach Randolph wants to move me up to center, Dad. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, well, I don't really want to play center. And I said, well, do you want to play hockey? And he says, yeah. And I go, well, then you'll play the team, that, the role that you need to. And he said, okay. And that was it. He played center and he was, he played varsity the whole season as a, as a, as a senior. He obviously lettered. Um, he, he, he worked his butt off. And, and once again, for a parent, that's what what's most proud. I mean, I'm obviously proud that my kids were able to play for such a storied um, program like Duluth East and to play for a man like Coach Randolph. But I think most importantly was that they they learn life lessons through Coach Randolph, and that is you work hard. You might not want to play the role that you want to. And had I been a dad who was going to be, or my wife was that mom that was going to interfere, um, I think that Marcus's career at Duluth East would have taken a sharp turn because we would have been complaining his junior year, why, why was he only sitting on the bench? Come, come trials, I would have been that parent who could have you know, yelled and, and screamed and called up Mike, um, and we didn't. What happened? Why is Mike Randolph not coach of Duluth East? What happened? I think he's just a polarizing guy. I, think, you know, I don't think people genuinely like truth. I don't think the people and parents, they, don't want, their, they want their children to be the person. You know, they, want, they want their kid to be the next Sidney Crosby or, or um, you know, whoever that might be, and, and all of our kids aren't that way. And, and, and it's that position, that, that role, and I don't think as parents, I don't think that we, I think we're failing our kids, I do. Well, if I understand, I, my understanding is there were two athletes, two student athletes, and their parents that kind of perpetuated this where we're at today. That's what I've heard. I, I mean, we, I still have, you know, friends that, that you know, kids have, have just come out of the program and, and some little ones, and. And I, that's, that's what I've heard, too. Well, I've, I've talked to Mike, and I've talked to a lot of people. I've talked to probably 150 people since this happened because everyone's calling me because I've been so close to the Duluth East program for the last 30 years. And there's a lot more that there's a lot of parents that teamed up 
on this from way back. I mean, parents that still have something against him. And I tell you what, Mike, you were at that uh, day at the press conference, and uh, he said it right, you know. He had no help from the administration, you know, from the AD, from the principal, from the superintendent, the school board, none of them. And he resigned, but people thought he meant retired. No, he's not. He loves hockey. He lives hockey. That's his life to the day he dies. You know, he loves this game. And he, I, everyone knows, Mike knows that sooner or later he's going to have another job and he wants to coach high school hockey again. Well, that's not good for Duluth. I, no. I went to Duluth Central, and when Duluth East went to, you know, there was the rivalry thing back in the day. I don't know if that's still a thing or not. But um, when Duluth East went to state, I wanted Duluth to be successful. I wanted those Duluth boys, of course, Mike Randolph, to win a state championship. Mm -hmm. How does this affect Duluth hockey with Mike Randolph not a part of the fabric of hockey in Duluth? Uh, in my opinion, as, as, a, as a former parent um, and as, a, I guess, a, an overall fan of hockey and, and high school hockey, Duluth East will, will continue. I mean, there will be high school hockey at Duluth East. But when you leave the, or when you lose the fabric, you lose the, the, the person, um, the cornerstone of, of the dynasty, so to speak, it's going to be extremely difficult to, to replace. And honestly, I don't think they will. Um, you know, and I don't know if you really want me to elaborate too much, but. Yes. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So, so when, when we were in Forest Lake, and it was my son's junior year, my son Paige. We were up here and we played Duluth East. And it was Jake Randolph, I think Dom Tony and Otto, and, and, and I believe it was Trevor, Trevor Olson. Right. And they're all three on the same line together. Fantastic, fantastic line. And my wife and I are sitting in, in the bleachers and we're watching this breakout. And it's from Jake over to Dom, over to Trevor, and they're back and forth behind the center. And, Tick tack, boom, 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 and our defenseman had no idea what to do, and right at the last minute, the puck goes over. It was like it was professional hockey. It really was. the The sound of that puck hitting their sticks was crisp. It was hard, and the passes were crisp and hard. And then boom, and I think they beat us five to two or five to one or whatever it was. But my wife and I, even though our son just got lit up, we were in awe of watching this. So then you take that um, when we moved up here. And watching how Randolph runs his camp, that's that's his warm up. I mean, his warm up is the same thing. It's tic tac toe, tic tac toe, all the way down. And I don't. I think Mike took a lot of average players and made them great. That's my opinion. And for those of you parents that disagree with me, I'm sorry. I think they took a, 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 a below average players in, in in my son case and made him a very good player. One of the beefs uh, Mike Randolph always got was that he had no control over the Pee Wees and Bantams, except for his camps. He can bring them into his camps, but then they go to yeah. them. And he had no control over how that coach coached the Bantam team and the Pee Wee team. So once in a while he sees a player in his camp that, hey, I better bring this kid up and start training him right. He might be a forward, just like your kid. He would change him over. Hey, this kid's going to be a D. And he puts him back on D, and before you know it, he's D1. Yep. How many times I can, I, I, got, I don't yep. have enough hands and feet. How many times he's, he's done that. And you got to remember, Mike Randolph, in his 32 years as coach, made it to the state 18 times. Mm -hmm. And Duluth East, 1960, I know, I think 1961 they made it too, but they won it in 1960, and then they went in 1975. There was no program really where t every year there Mike yeah. Randolph changed this all around and some great teams he had to be absolutely and 14 out of the first 15 times they got to the finals in the section finals they won 14 out of 15 now tell me is that luck or is that someone knows how to coach that's the general behind the bench <laughs> yep. making the right decisions right absolutely. you just that you can't get lucky that many times I'm sorry <laughs> no and so I mean He's had a great career already, and I'm talking to him the other night. I'm kind of glad that he's still thinking that he wants a coach, and he has an open mind on this. And 
Hey, I'll tell you one thing. The administration screwed up on this again. He, they did that many years ago, 2003. Mm -hmm. They did it again. And I saw the superintendent on channel 13, WDIO, the other night. And he was saying, oh, Mike Randolph resigned and we wish him the best. No, he, he resigned because he can't afford $100,000 for a lawyer. He resigned because he got no help from the AD. He resigned because he got no help from the principal. He resigned because the school board would not help him. They're not on his side. He resigned because of the new superintendent, just trying to stay out of it, not get his feet muddy, you know? And it's kind of sad that this goes on in these school boards now. It's really sad, really. You know, Jerry, just to add to that, um, you know, speaking of the athletic director, uh, when we moved up here once again from Forest Lake, um, you know, there was, uh, you know, some questions, you know, people saying, well, you're moving up here just to play for Duluth East, you know, you're recruited, blah, blah, blah. And that couldn't be further from the truth, not even in the same, not even, I guess, to even discuss. But what, what was interesting is, you know, when we called, we wanted to make sure that we were within the confines and within the, the east boundaries because that's where our, our we had three children that were going to go, my, my son Paige, my daughter Whitney, and my youngest son Marcus. My oldest son Cole had, had graduated already from Forest Lake in 2010. And so I called up the athletic director and to make sure that everything was fine. Uh, I met with, with the athletic director and um, made sure that, that everything was, was fine, that the paperwork, that there's nothing, you know, that, that my son Paige could, could compete because he wasn't playing any fall sports. And the athletic director said, yeah, everything is fine. You know, you live within the boundaries. Everything is good. You know, that's it. The day of, Jerry, now, now think of this. The day of, we're talking, it's, it's lunchtime. My son Paige gets called in the office by the athletic director and is told, you know, Scooger, are you planning on trying out for hockey tonight? Because that's my understanding. And Paige says, yeah, why? Well, you're ineligible, right? So, so I don't really talk about this that often, but... Paige calls me up in a complete frantic, and I'm headed down to the cities for to get some get some work done uh, for my office. And as I, I'm just com coming out of town, Paige calls me up, tells me this. I ended up I had to I had to do all the legwork myself. Apparently, there was a a form that Forest Lake had to send over to Duluth East. Now this guy waited from what September 8th of that school year until what two months, something like that, till the middle of November to notify my son that he's ineligible to play. Um, so, so you're right. Um, I have no respect for, for the administration. I have no respect for the athletic director, none. I think that the cards have been stacked against Mike Randolph for a long time because Mike knows what it takes to win. And, and I think the other part of it too is that they, they don't genuinely know the coach. They don't know that, that you know, it's not about playing a kid because he's a senior. You know, in a pro prolific uh, um, program like Duluth East, in my opinion, you know, you got to play the right players. And, and sometimes those right players might not necessarily be the best players either. Well, it's so kind of funny is that uh, I was just talking to a parent the other day that kid left early, but uh, these kids uh, think they're so good and they're, they don't like the discipline. There's a few out there that don't like discipline. Well, they, they're good enough to play hockey after high school, which is, hey, they have talented players to do that. And they go out there, and then they find out, God, Coach Randolph wasn't that bad after all, you know? Right. And, <laughs> and I mean, When hockey all the becomes time, a business, right? And how many players I've known so over the years that come back, if it wasn't for Randolph being so tough on them, they would not make a lot of things in their life go good because that discipline really helped. Absolutely. Well, I've really... I can't even believe we're talking about this, quite frankly. Uh, one of the winningest coaches in the state of Minnesota, and because of a couple of disgruntled players and parents, he's out of a job at Duluth East. This is really kind of hard to almost even comprehend, to be honest with you. And it really angers me that Mike Randolph, more than likely, Jerry, according to you, and I hope you're wrong, won't coach in Duluth whether it be at a private or a public school, it certainly is gonna be a public school. And he's gonna go elsewhere because he's gonna coach again. I, I do believe that as well as you do, but this is terrible for Duluth hockey, to be quite honest. This is, uh, it's, it's outrageous. Well, look at what 
Duluth Hockey, Mike did. He's 32 years at East, two years at Duluth Denfield, co-coach, two years at Duluth Cathedral, three years at St. Scholastica, three years at UMD. Hmm. So that's over 40 years he's put in the Northland coaching kids and that, college kids and high school kids. And his love is high school because he gets them when they're young and that, and you can train them. You got to remember, he was, uh, I think, a fifth grade teacher most of the time. Right. Yeah, so he, he's used to young kids. And, and the interesting and his piece kids to that, love him. The interesting piece to that, Jerry, is I, I didn't know that that was Mike's career until we moved up here. I, I thought, this guy is a fifth grade, wow. You know, uh, <laughs> it, it was it was great. I, and, and you know, fifth graders are they don't know which way they're going. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, absolutely. So uh, let's go back on uh, us three talk about some memories. Here's some of the memories I had. The first uh, 1991, I first came up here and they went to their state tournament, first state tournament with Mike, and they beat Darby Hendrickson, where everyone thought was going to win the state. They kicked their butt. Then I rem always remember the Spihar year, triple hat tricks, mm -hmm. you know. Then you get the next year where they lost in that overtime, five overtime game with Apple Valley. And a lot of people say that the puck went in the second overtime, you know, and they didn't have instant replay. Then they lose um, 19, second place in 1997, and they, they were heavy favorites in the goalie. That's why I say Stanley Cup, I don't care what sport, what level, Goaltending comes through, and absolutely. <laughs> then '98, they won again. But then there's some other games that people all over, anyone in hockey knows, like the second place with EP when triple overtime, yeah. one of the best games in hockey. When was that? In 2011. Yep. Yeah, we were at the Duluth Arena. The UMD Bulldogs were playing a game that night. Mm -hmm. Then, then the very next year, all top four seeds in Double A lost the first night. That was my first son's day. senior year. Yeah. Hmm. It's crazy. I mean, that was, <laughs> and then 2015, every parent was really mad at Randolph this year. They didn't have the talent at all. So Randolph started putting forward up high. Mm -hmm. So we had three back on top of the blue line there. So it was hard for the other team to get the puck out. And everyone's been throwing, my kid can't score, my kid can't score. Well, Truth is, couldn't score they, they didn't score anyhow. <laughs> it wouldn't matter what you did. <laughs> so they, but they got to state. Then they were behind uh, St. Thomas, like four to one, three to. I mean, they were behind like three goals, and they came back and won in overtime, mm -hmm. six five. Then the next night, I never saw a state tournament game where the fans went so crazy when Ash Altman scored a breakaway, and the fans went crazy because they knew Edina is losing. Mm -hmm. The whole stadium was with Duluth East that night. It was crazy. And then, uh, I mean, they lost a, Lake, a very good Lakeville North team in the championship game, but that's some of the memories I have. What do you guys have? Well, I remember after that season, uh, Duluth hosted uh, the uh, Hockey Day Minnesota, mm -hmm. and it was a rematch against Lakeville North, I believe. Right. right? And so that was that was awesome uh, taking place here in Duluth. But uh, I just the few times that you and I have had him on, Jerry, he was always uh, he was just kind of a likable guy. There was never any tension, and you know I've gotten to know him, and you know him much better than I do. You went to school with him, but uh, I consider him a friend. And uh, I, I just again I can't believe that we're talking about this. It's very upsetting. But Eric, well, Jerry. We've had Eric on, Eric, a father of former player at Duluth East. What is next for you? What, what would you like to say to the parents that are behind this or, or any parent? What, what are your feelings there. about where, why we're here? Well, for those that know me would know that I probably shouldn't say exactly what I want to say to them. Well, this is public on, access. On live TV. There's a couple of words you can't say, so avoid those. Um, no, I, I, honest to goodness, and, and this goes to current players, future players, and former players. Um, you know, we obviously, uh, we were all in uh, for hockey. Um, you know, growing up, our kids, you know, we'd, when we lived in the cities, we'd go you know, watch, watch the Gophers play. And, and that was back when having a, a Gopher ticket to get in that arena was like gold because you couldn't get in those games. 
And I remember sitting there watching, taking my kids and saying, you could be out here someday. You could be doing this. And, and watching uh, the state tournament on TV, and then we, we were fortunate enough to get uh, season tickets. And going down and watching the state tournament and, and telling my, my, my boys, um, you could be down here. You can do this. Um, but you have to decide how much work you're willing to do how much sacrifice are you willing to do? And, and yeah, I, I, you know, I, I was an overbearing parent in, in a lot of aspects, but the one thing that, that I can truly say and advise to parents is, you know, let your kids make their mistakes. Um, let them go out there and, and, and if they want to, if they want to stick handle, you know, some, some kids need a little more motivation, you know, talk to them, go out there and stick handle with them, shoot pucks. But if they want to do it, don't don't get involved with the high school coaches. I mean, we're not talking youth hockey because I, I mean, when we were in youth hockey, I had a couple episodes with some coaches, and I'm not proud of. But when it when it comes to high school hockey, you know, these are programs. You know, they're 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 not they're not in house programs anymore. They, these are these are programs, and your child may or may not be the best player, and if they're not, that's okay. That that's absolutely okay. Um, just let them be part of the team because you guys all know as well as I do when you get done with school and you get married or you're dating or you get a job it's about relationships it's about working as a team it's about you know learning how you know in my job I don't always get my way I'm sure you guys don't always get your way um, I know my wife doesn't always get her way um, but at the end of the day it, it's what we have to do as parents and that is just a give them a Give them that, that hope. I want to say one thing before the show ends. Anyone down in the Twin Cities, Mike Randolph resigned, did not retire. If there's a double-A team down there, <laughs> give get a hold of me or get a hold of Mike Randolph and make sure the administration will support him. And I'm sure Mike Randolph will look deeply into coaching hockey again. Well, Jerry, I think you should reach out to the parents and some of those players that are behind this because, and we'll give them equal time. Yeah. If they want to come on and talk about why Mike Randolph shouldn't be there and why this is a good thing that he's not at Duluth East. And uh, we'll see what happens there. But uh, Eric, thank you. No, thank you. I just want to leave you guys with this. What if it's Edina? Kurt Giles already talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have his job. <laughs> Well, there's this more. There's oh. going to there's going to be more on this. Thank you. Uh, we want to thank the staff at Pack TV, where this program is produced, downtown in City Hall at the Pack Studios, and uh, check us out on the internet, at MinnesotaHockeyConnection.com. Go to our Facebook page, like us there, and uh, we'll be back. We're kind of getting back in the groove here after uh, this pandemic thing, and there's going to be more on Mike, our Mike Randolph in Duluth East and all that's happening there. Eric Skoog, thank you. Thank you, John. Jerry, thank, thank you. you. And Pac, thank, thank you. you. And we'll be back here next week, maybe a couple of weeks to talk the puck. Yeah. We'll see you then.